Hello, my name's Michael Hoffman, and it's my pleasure to present to you updates on the pro-PSMA therapy and upfront PSMA studies. I had the pleasure of recently presenting the results of the pro-PSMA study at the EAU at virtual meeting, the world's largest urology meeting. Now, this is a randomized multi-center Australian study looking at PSMA PET CT as an initial staging procedure prior to surgery or radiotherapy. This was really the very first ArtNet study. Uh, it was conceived by Ros Francis and I, together with nuclear medicine and then urology and radiation oncology colleagues from around Australia. And there was a grant call from the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia, uh, thanks to an injection of funds from Movember. And we uh, submitted this proposal thinking that, you know, it wouldn't have much legs and much to our surprise, uh, it was funded. And this led to a large uh, multi-centre trial, uh, a really great collaboration of partners all around Australia, nuclear medicine, neurology, uh, radiation oncology, and importantly, our biostatistics teams, uh, trial coordinators, but also our radiopharmacy colleagues. And this was also uh, uh, done with the help of the ANZUP Cancer Trials Group. And ArtNet was pivotal in assuring high quality assurance, both prior to the commencement of study and during the study. Uh, we devised a uh, list of key specifications that must have been met by all uh, study sites uh, with regards to local production of uh, gallium PSMA 11. And uh, we also performed phantom images uh, using gallium 68 filled phantoms. And we showed before study uh, uh, commencement that 10 of 14 PET systems actually underestimated the SUV by 15% on average. And eventually we identified this as a incorrect factory setting in dose calibrators. And this uh, made me realize that testing the entire chain of measurements and calibration really should form part of a prerequisite uh, for these multi-center studies. The study really had amazing recruitment and finished almost six months ahead of schedule. You'll note in August uh, 2018, we were randomizing more than one patient every single day of the week, uh, including weekends. And the results were pleasingly recently published in uh, The Lancet. So if you have not read this manuscript, uh, please follow the link and get up to speed. And also have a look at the online supplementary appendix, which is really has a rich uh, data set with lots of interesting information. The primary outcome was that PSMA PET CT was 27% more accurate than conventional imaging. That's an accuracy of 92% for PSMA PET CT compared to 65% for the combined findings of CT and bone scintigraphy and that included a two bed step SPECT CT. We also reported the distribution of their PSMA PET findings and also key as secondary endpoints. Demonstrating change in management impact, lower equivocal studies, lower radiation dose, and importantly, high reporter agreement. So in summary, the pro-PSMA study uh, demonstrates uh, that PSMA PET CT is a suitable replacement to current standard of care CT and bone scan. Now, uh, pleasingly, this generated uh, quite a bit of media attention when the Lancet publication came out a couple months ago. So what's next for pro-PSMA? We have a health economics analysis performed by our colleagues uh, from CHIA group in Sydney. This is currently under peer review and will also be presented at the EANM meeting as an oral presentation and is a highly ranked submission. We also have ongoing follow-up of the men with PSMA negative PETs to define various time to failure parameters. We have tertiary analyses looking at PSMA PET compared to multiparametric MRI or the value of PSMA PET findings within the prostate glands. And we're also looking at some artificial intelligence image analysis of these data sets. The experience with the pro-PSMA study led us to believe that we could conduct these rather complex randomized trials in Australia with the assistance of ArtNet and clinical trials groups. And this led fairly directly to the evolution of the therapy trial. 
The results of the therapy trial were recently presented at the ASCO at Clinical Oncology meeting, also a virtual meeting this year. And this is a randomized phase two study of lutetium PSMA617 compared to carbazitaxel chemotherapy in men with castration resistant metastatic prostate cancer. The aim of the study was to determine the activity and safety of lutetium PSMA compared to carbazitaxel and we randomized 200 men around Australia to either lutetium or chemotherapy. And this was conducted at 11 sites around Australia. Importantly, we screened patients with PSMA and FDG PET and only men with high, FDG, high PSMA activity at all sites of disease were eligible for treatment. The primary endpoint defined by a PSA drop of 50% or more compared to baseline was met with a 66% response rate with lutetium PSMA compared to 37% with carbazitaxel, a very large difference between the two arms with non-overlapping confidence intervals. We're also able to look at adverse events and importantly there were less severe grade 3 4 toxicities with lutetium PSMA despite better response rates uh, compared to carbazitaxel chemotherapy. So we, the results of this trial concluded that in men with progressive disease following docetaxel, lutetium PSMA was more active than chemotherapy with relatively fewer grade 3 to 4 adverse events and a PSA progression-free survival favoring lutetium PSMA. Again, lots of people to thank for this study, uh, including funding from uh, PCFA, Movember, It's a Bloke Thing, uh, Can for Cancer, uh, ANSTO that supplied Lutetium 177 and Endocyte for supplying us with PSMA 617. Here's some nice footage of the therapy study team uh, visiting ANSTO to learn a little bit more about how the no-carrier added Lutetium is manufactured. Again, a big shout out to all the uh, medical oncology, nuclear medicine and clinical trials teams around Australia that made this study possible. We recently held a webinar, a global knowledge exchange together with our partners at the Prostate Cancer Foundation. And remarkably, we had over 500 participants from 43 countries all online discussing the results of the therapy study. So what's next for the therapy study? Well, we await 170 progression events that will trigger the next planned analysis, and we anticipate another high impact publication, possibly in the fourth quarter of this year. We've also got a rich image data set, and we're interested in looking at the prognostic value of all these PSMA and FDG PET CTs. And we also took blood from all these men at multiple time points, which are currently frozen, and we will be performing a variety of translational endpoints looking at circulating tumor DNA and other blood biomarkers. Now the third study we're going to talk about today uh, has occurred as a result of a, another Movember-led initiative uh, which we were lucky enough to receive grant funding for and our grant is called the Upfront PSMA Alliance using Theranostics early to eradicate prostate cancer and develop new novel strategies study is the upfront PSMA study, a randomized phase two study of sequential lutetium PSMA and docetaxel versus docetaxel in men with metastatic hormone naive prostate cancer. This is the team structure, another trial co-badged by ANZUP together with ARTNET, uh, led by myself and Arun Azad, one of our medical oncology colleagues. And a quick shout out to Knight, our nuclear medicine PhD candidate, who is focusing uh, on this project. So really, we've started with using lutetium PSMA as a last line of therapy after failing conventional treatments. And this study moves it back one big step to the hormone sensitive group of patients and a group of patients with newly diagnosed prostate cancer. So this is the trial schema. We're taking men with newly diagnosed prostate cancer who have advanced metastatic disease on bone scan and CT and a PSA over 10. And then they undergo a PSMA and FDG PET. And if they have a high volume of disease on PSMA PET, they're eligible for randomization uh, to either the experimental arm consisting of two cycles of lutetium followed by standard care docetaxel or docetaxel alone. The primary endpoint of this study is undetectable PSA at 12 months and a number of secondary endpoints. Uh, this study 
uh, is running at the therapy network of sites and we recently randomised patient number one at Peter Mac in Melbourne and we look forward to all the other sites opening in the not too distant future. ArtNet has been pivotal in this study, again, performing quality control and assurance activities before study commencement and uh, during QC. And uh, with Novartis taking over the intellectual property for PSMA 617, we have entered into an agreement with some slightly tighter quality control parameters than what we've done on the therapy study. All the PET images in our study undergo central review. We use the Widen system, a web-based system that anonymizes the images and also checks the image quality uh, before sending it out to one of three reviewers for central review. By way of summation, I'd like to highlight an editorial I recently wrote in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine after the publication of ProPSMA, a call out to the nuclear medicine community to change practices with prospective high quality data. And I wrote that establishing collaborative networks, working together and upskilling the next generation of nuclear medicine specialists in clinical trial methodology are really key to achieving this goal. As new radio traces emerge, there is a pressing need to develop and enrol patients in well-designed clinical trials. This is our best chance to properly evaluate the impact of our tests and enable widespread access by our patients. And I'd like to, to thank ArtNet and the leadership within the AANMS and the ANZSNM back in 2015 uh, to establish this uh, committee and, and the network. And a particular shout out to uh, Ros Francis, uh, the chair of the scientific committee, and Andrew Scott, uh, who was pivotal early on in establishing this, uh, but also our radio pharmacy, radio chemistry, nuclear medicine technology uh, colleagues that uh, make up the committee and uh, enable it to function and succeed. Really a, a very big thank you to everyone involved. So none of this research would be possible without a large number of collaborators that really uh, enable all of this to occur. So a, a shout out to everyone at, who's helped both from nuclear medicine, but also our euro-oncology, multidisciplinary uh, collaborators, importantly, our funding partners who really enable this work to succeed. Thank you. And lastly, I'll leave you with some footage from Peter Mac in Melbourne. Thank you.